and loathsome is thy visage. Sirs, I will practice on this drunken man. Small ale. Your honor, your lordship. Call me not honor, your lordship. Am I not Christopher Sly, old Sly, son of Burtony? Thou art a lord, and nothing but a lord. These fifteen years, you have been in a dream. Hmm. Hmm. These fifteen years, by my fair goodly nap. Upon my life. I am a lord indeed. <laughs> your doctors thought it good you hear a play and frame your mind to mirth and merry men. Well, we'll see it. Gentlemen, importune me no farther, for how I firmly am resolved you know, that is not to bestow my youngest daughter before I have a husband for the elder. Oh, oh. If either of you both love Katerina, leave shall you have to court her at your pleasure. To cart her, rather. She's too rough for me. I pray you, sir. Is it your will to make a tail of me among these mates? Mates, maid? No mates for you, unless you were of gentler, milder mould. Yeah! Oh, from all such devils, good lord deliver us. Uh, and me too, good lord. Bianca, get you it. <laughs> Let it not displease thee, good Bianca, for I will love thee ne'er the less, my girl. A pretty peat. Sister, content you in my discontent. Sir, to your pleasure, humbly I subscribe. Why will you mew her up, Signor Baptista, for this fiend of hell? <laughs> Gentlemen, content ye, I am resolved. Katerina, you may stay. Why, and I trust I may go too, may I not? <laughs> well, well. What a wretched state of affairs. Old Baptista will never give his consent to the marriage of the fair Bianca. Not until a husband is found for Katerina. No consent, no dowry. <laughs> My good friend, Petruchio, what happy gale blows you to Padua here from old Verona? Such wind as scatters young men through the world. Signor Hortensio, I come to wive it wealthily in Padua. If wealthily, then happily in Padua. I can, Petruchio, help thee to a wife. With wealth enough and young and beauteous, brought up as best becomes a gentlewoman. Her only fault, and that is false enough, is that she is in Tolerable, cursed, and shrewd, and froward. I would not wed her for a mine of gold. Hortensio, peace. 
Thou knowest not gold's effect. I will not sleep, Hortensio, till I see her. Good sister, wrong me not, nor wrong yourself to make a bondmaid and a slave of me. <coughs> Why, how now, dame? Whence grows this insolence? For shame, thou hilding of a devilish spirit. Why dost thou wrong her that is ne'er wrong thee? Bianca, get thee in. Nay, now I see she is your treasure. She must have a husband. I must dance barefoot on her wedding day. Talk not to me. I will go sit and weep till I can find occasion for revenge. Whatever gentleman thus grieved as I. <laughs> but who comes here? I am a gentleman of Verona, sir. Petruchio is my name. Pray, have you not a daughter called Caterina, fair and virtuous? I have a daughter, sir, called Caterina. Signor Baptista, my business asketh haste and every day I cannot come to woo. Then tell me, if I get your daughter's love, what dowry shall I have with her to wife? After my death, the one half of my lands and in possession, 20,000 crowns. Let covenants be therefore drawn between us. Aye, where the special thing is well obtained, that is her love, for that is all in all. Why, that is nothing. <laughs> Well mayst thou woo, and happy be thy speed, but be thou armed for some unhappy words. Shall I send my daughter Kate to you? I pray you do. I'll attend her here. Oh! Good morrow, Kate. For that's your name, I hear? Well, have you heard? But something hard of hearing. They call me Catherine, that do talk of me. You lie, Faith. For you are called plain Kate. And Bonnie Kate. And sometimes Kate the Cursed. But Kate, the prettiest Kate in Christendom, hearing thy mildness praised in every town, thy virtues spoke of and thy beauty sounded, myself am moved to woo thee for a wife. Moved in good time. Let him that moved you hither remove you hence. Come, come, you wasp. faith, you are too angry. If I be waspish, best beware my sting. My remedy, then, is to pluck it out. I, if the fool could find it where it lies. Who knows not where a wasp does wear his sting? In his tail. Oh. <clears throat> and so, farewell. Nay, come again. Good Kate, I am a gentleman. That I'll try. I swear I'll cuff you if you strike again. If you strike me, you are no gentleman. In sooth, you escape not so. Let me go. Why does the world report that Kate doth limp? Oh, slanderous world! Kate, like the hazel twig, is straight and slender. Now let me see thee walk. Thou dost not halt. Go, fool! Am I not wise? Yes, keep you warm. Marry, so I mean, sweet Catherine, in thy bed. Now, Kate, I am a husband for your turn. For I am he am born to tame you, Kate and bring you from a wild Kate to a Kate conformable as other household Kates. Now, Signor Petruccio, how speed you with my daughter? How but well, sir. We have greed so well together that upon Sunday is the wedding day. I'll see thee hanged on Sunday first. <laughs> Tis bargained twixt us twain, being alone, that she shall still be cursed in company. I tell you, tis incredible to believe how much she loves me. Oh, the kindest, Kate. 
she hung about my neck, and kiss on kiss she vied so fast that in a twink she won me to her love. I know not what to say, but give me your hand. God send you joy, Petruchio. Tis a match. Provide the feast, father, and bid the guests. I will to Venice. Sunday comes apace. We will have rings and things and fine array. And kiss me, Kate. We will be married a Sunday. Ah. It was Sunday. The bride was ready, and everyone awaited the coming of the bridegroom. They waited, and they waited, and they waited. I told you, I. He was a frantic fool. Now must the world point at poor Catherine and say, Lo, there is mad Petruchio's wife. If it would please him, come and marry her. <laughs> Go, girl. I cannot blame thee now to weep. For such an injury would vex a saint. Master, master, news. And such news as you never heard of. Is he come? Oh. Where is Kate? The morning wears. It is time we were in church. But thus I trust you will not marry her. Good sooth, even thus. For me she is married, not unto my clothes. But what a fool am I to chat with you when I should bid good morrow to my bride and seal the title with a lovely kiss. Mm. Gentlemen and friends, I thank you for your pains. I know you think to dine with me today, but so it is, my haste doth call me hence. Is it possible you will away tonight? I must away before night come. Oh, oh let me entreat you to stay till after dinner. It cannot be. Let me entreat you. Now, if you love me, stay. Grumio! My horse? Nay, then, do what thou canst. I will not go today. No, nor tomorrow. Not till I please myself. Gentlemen, forward to the bridal dinner. They shall go forward, Kate, at thy command. Obey the bride, you that attend on her. Go to the feast and carouse full measure to her maidenhead. But for my bonny Kate, she must with me. I will be master of what is mine own. <laughs> <laughs> Mistress, what is your opinion of your sister? That being mad herself, she's madly mated. <laughs> Your house in Verona. Servants are making ready for the arrival of the master and his wife. Where be these knaves? What? No man at door to hold my stirrup nor to take my horse. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Go, rascals. Go and fetch my supper in. Where is the life that late I led? Be merry, Kate. Some water here. What ho! Come, Kate, and wash, and welcome heartily. Ow. You horse and villain. Will you let it fall? Patience, I pray you. It was a fault unwilling. Uh, horse and beetle-headed, flap-eared knave. Come, Kate, sit down. I know you have a stomach. What's this? Mutton? Aye. It is burnt. I pray you, husband, 
be not so disquiet. The meat was well. I tell thee, Kate, it was burnt and dried away. And better twere that both of us did fast. Come, I will bring thee to thy bridal chamber. Peter, didst ever see the like? He kills her in her own humour. <laughs> Thus have I politically begun my reign. Last night she slept not, nor tonight she shall not. He that knows better how to tame a shrew, now let him speak. What, Kate was learning one lesson. Her sister, the fair Bianca, was learning another. Lucentio, a rich young man from Pisa, cunningly disguised as a schoolmaster, had outbid his rivals and won her hand and heart. <laughs> what master read you? The art to love. And may you prove, sir, master of your art. While you, sweet dear, prove mistress of my heart. Hortensio <laughs> oh. oh. and Gremio gave up their hopes for Bianca's love. Gremio retired to his money back. And Hortensio decided to marry a rich widow. First, he called at his friend Petruccio's house. Mistress, what cheer? Faith, as cold as can be. Pluck up thy spirits. Here, love, thou seest how diligent I am to dress thy meat myself. What? Not a word? Nay, then thou lovest it not. Here, take away this dish. I pray you, let it stand. The poorest service is repaid with thanks, and so shall mine before you touch the meat. I thank you, sir. Kate, eat apace. And now, my honey love, we will return unto thy father's house and revel it as bravely as the best, with silken coats and caps and golden rings. What hast thou dined? The tailor stays thy leisure. Here is the cap of your worship at this big Why? Tis a cockle or a walnut shell. A baby's cap. Come, let me have a bigger. I'll have no bigger. Gentlewomen wear such caps as these. When you are gentle, you shall have one too. And not till then. That will not be in haste. Thy gown. Come, tailor, let us see it. <laughs> What's this? A sleeve carved like an apple tart? Here, snip and snip and cut and fish and slash. Ah, none of it. Away, thou rag, thou quantity, thou remnant. Oh, oh. I never saw a better fashioned gown. Hortensio, say thou wilt see the tailor paid. Well, come, my Kate. We will unto your father's. Even in these honest, mean habiliments. Our purses shall be proud, our garments poor. For tis the mind that makes the body rich. Let's see. I think tis now some seven o'clock. And well, we may come there by dinner time. I dare assure you, sir, tis almost two. It shall be what o'clock I say it is. Why, so this gallant will command the sun. Come on, a God's name, once more towards our fathers. Good Lord, how bright and goodly shines the moon. The moon? The sun? It is not moonlight now. I say it is the moon that shines so bright. I know it is the sun that shines so bright. <sighs> Evermore crossed and crossed, nothing but crossed. Forward, I pray, and be it moon or sun or what you please. I say it is the moon. I know it is the moon. Nay, then you lie. It is the blessed sun. Then God be blessed. It is the blessed sun. But sun it is not when you say it is not. And the moon changes even as your mind. What you shall have it named, even that it is. And so it shall be so for Catherine. 
And so, they came to Padua. Hortensio married his rich widow, and Bianca married her lover, Lucentio. And afterwards, there was a great banquet. Now, in good sadness, son Petruccio, I think thou hast the veriest true of all. Well, I say no. And therefore, for assurance, let's each one send unto his wife, and he whose wife is most obedient shall win the wager which we will propose. Content! What's the wager? Twenty crowns. Twenty crowns? I'll venture so much of my hawk or hound, but twenty times so much upon my wife. A hundred, then? A match. It is done. Who shall begin? That will I. Go bid my mistress come to me. How now? What news? Sir, your mistress sends you word that she is busy and she cannot come. How? She's busy and she cannot come? Is that an answer? Oh, pray God, sir, your wife send you not a word. Go and entreat my wife to come to me forthwith. Oh, entreat her? Nay, then she needs must come. I am afraid, sir. Do what you can. Yours will not be entreated. Now, where's my wife? She will not come. She bids you come to her. Worse and worse. She will not come. Oh, vile, intolerable, not to be endured. Go to your mistress. Say I command her to come to me. I know her answer. What? She will not. What is your will, sir, that you send for me? Where is your sister and Hortensio's wife? They sit conferring by the pile of fire. Away, I say, and bring them hither straight. <laughs> Here is a wonder, if you talk of wonder. Now fare before thee, good Petruccio, the wager thou hast won, and I will add unto their losses twenty thousand crowns, another dowry to another daughter, for she is changed as she had never been. Nay, I will win my wager better yet. Catherine, that cap of yours becomes you not. Off with that bauble. Let me never have cause to sigh till I be brought to such a silly pass. By what a foolish duty call you this? I wish your duty were as foolish too. The wisdom of your duty, fair Bianca, hath cost me a hundred crowns since supper time. The more fool you for laying on my duty. Catherine, I charge thee, tell these headstrong women what duty they do owe their lords and husbands. She shall not. Fie, fie. Unknit that threatening, unkind brow. It blots thy beauty. A woman moved is like a fountain troubled, muddy, ill-seeming, thick, bereft of beauty. Thy husband is thy lord, thy life, thy keeper, one that cares for thee and for thy maintenance commits his body to painful labour both by sea and land, whilst thou liest warm at home, secure and safe, and craves no other tribute at thy hands but love, fair looks, and true obedience, too little payment for so great a debt. Why, there's a wench. Come on and kiss me, Kate. Twas I won the wager, and being a winner, God give you good night. Sim, get some more wine. What's all the players gone? Am I not a lord? Oh, I have had the bravest drink. I know now how to tame a shrew. A pair of stocks! You rogue! 